Hey guys, so I managed to go 10-0 and in war games. Um, I wanted to talk about the deck that I used, and I'm going to go through some of the replays. Um, as you can see, I'm not quite my Tiberium on my mains yet, but I have got a, a really good win rate so far. Both uh, Nod and GDI have got pretty good win rates. Um, but I do want to talk about the decks that I used to get to the 10 wins on the war games. I used the deck that I talked about in my video, which was the... Um, Blade deck, or the Striker deck, it's essentially uh, the big package of infantry followed by the War Dogs, the Pitbulls, and then just drones at the end as well. In general, like, I only actually used three units in almost all of my wins, which was Pitbulls, um, War Dogs, and Snipers. Really, I only used those three units. I'm going to go through some of the replays. kind of want to go through some of the ones where things are a bit more even. So, for instance, versus Bernie Hands here, we'll have a look at this one. Establishing Battlefield Control. And we'll kind of go through exactly what I did. I don't want to go through the games where I had a level advantage or too much of a level advantage because obviously that's not fun. Three, two, Although I would say a lot of my games I did have a pretty significant available. level advantage. So on this map, I generally tended to open Harvester first. Now the reason Harvester I did that is because the Tiberium patches are quite far away from the base and I wanted to start generating Tiberium income as quickly as possible. The only thing that I would have been weak to in those circumstances in general were going to be... Um, uh, MG squad openers. MG squad openers could have potentially put me behind, but I always had the drones to back me up, and I had snipers and war dogs as well. So this guy's just running those militants, or those uh, riflemen around my base. They're not going to pose any threat, and I'm much more interested in maintaining control of the platform um, to make sure that I get my first missile. I basically wait to see what he builds. I see that he goes into a pit bull. I decide to go into a pit bull myself. He has got the missile troopers to help. Um, and I do kind of mess up here, but I am much more interested in just making sure I'm maintaining control of the platform. Unfortunately, I screw up this first missile. I get my snipers on the board, but they're a little bit too late, and his missile troopers are actually a really good holder versus my pit bulls. So I'm obviously fighting back now against um, this guy and trying to get the next two missiles. Messed up the first one mainly because of the fact that those missile troopers were holding the top platform, and I couldn't really move my pit bull anywhere. So now it comes down to just pure pit bull. Um, and you'll probably see that I end up building a lot of pit bulls in this game. This is literally pit bull, pit bull versus pit bull spam. What I'm going to do is try and trade places. Uh, my pit bulls and my uh, snipers trade trade places a lot. I don't want to lose too many of them to talent spam. And you can see that it's really coming down to a pure pit bull versus pit bull war. Pit bull is just the best unit in this game. Uh, mode because it literally deals with almost anything that's thrown at it. Uh, that's why I've got jump jet troopers though. Jump jet troopers are the best answer to pit bulls and I've got the combination of jump jet troopers snipers where they send something at my jump jet troopers I can body block with the pit bull and use the snipers to take it out. He actually very cleverly decided to start building into air, um, which essentially started to threaten my sniper backline, which I had quite a lot of. I managed to just keep myself contested on all of the pads, and the uh, the riflemen weren't good enough to take out my jump jets quickly enough, and that meant I was able to take the second missile, puts me back on level pegging, and I still have that big beefy backline of snipers to help me deal with whatever's being thrown at me. Now that second set of snipers that I built here are not particularly good, simply because there's nothing that can kill them. But what I'm going to do here, and you'll notice that I do it um, quite intentionally, is he's going to start spamming a lot of air units to deal with my jump jet triggers and my snipers. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to try and keep these air units as low as possible so that he doesn't have a population cap to contest this last missile. This is what I'm going to do with my pit bulls. I'm going to intentionally kill off my jump jet troopers there. I'm not so ha I'm not so bothered that one of my sniper squads dies because I'm freeing up space to now go for my pit bull spam. He's got a lot of population cap with just drones and talons, so a single missile squad is not going to be good enough considering that I also have a, uh, a set of snipers still on the field. And you can see, I'm just going to intentionally keep those drones and those talons pretty low towards the end of this missile charge because he then won't have the uh, unit resources to be able to contest this last missile. And what we've ended up happening here is I body block, I make sure that I have everything that I need to make sure this missile is mine, and he was too late to be able to contest anything that I had in terms of my pit bull spam because he had too many air units out for that final missile. It's really important. I think, to make sure, especially in this game mode, that you're sacrificing units that are no longer relevant, because from what I found, it was pretty much counterpunch after counterpunch. But that's why pit bulls and snipers for me were the, the ultimate combo, because snipers killed pretty much anything in extended range lost. that came out of the uh, barracks, and then pit bulls beat everything else. So it's basically pit bulls beat everything else, snipers beat everything that comes out of the infantry and the barracks. So that was a good game. Uh, let's see if there's anyone's close. Yeah, this was a pretty good game. He was running Mohawk, which was interesting. Not everyone runs Mohawk. Establishing um, I, I think I've seen people have really good success with Mohawk. 
on this particular game mode, but I think that it just loses to Talons and it can lose to two New pit bulls when set received. at the same time. I also don't think Riflemen were that good just because of how War Dogs were going to be popular and the fact Officer that you had Snipers ready. and Shockwaves on the field. But they, uh, they are a pretty good scouting unit, they get out uh, pretty quickly, and then you have also access to the barracks, which provides you the most options in terms of the War Games units that were given to you. So this guy had a pretty heavy air deck. The unfortunate thing about air is that it just loses to, to, to Pitbull Spam. And so what you'll find in this game is that he has got a, a couple of responses here and there. He's got the missile squads. Um, that's why I went into barracks, because I realized that it's very likely that he's going to go missiles into my war dogs. So I want to make sure that I've got my snipers. I put my snipers in that position where they have good control over two aspects of the map. But I can see he's built a talent already. And now I'm just going to be kiting my snipers around behind my uh, pitbull. You'll see that I just put them behind my pitbull. Makes it difficult for his talent to get onto my uh, snipers. And then they're going to stay safe. I can then set them up once more in a defensive position around the pads. And he is not willing to uh, to contest these pads. He then goes into drones, which are a really good answer to snipers. But I read it. I can see it's happening. Uh, I'm going to send two pitbulls down to quickly clear out those drones before they can deal any deal considerable, da considerable damage over to my snipers. Then I'm going to set my snipers up, try and deal more damage to his missile squads, and I'm actually going to set another set of snipers on him because uh, in general I need to clear these missile troopers out pretty heavy, uh, quickly and they're actually moving between two pads, which is really annoying. Um, but if I get the missile squads down, it's going to be that I'm pretty safe to then go for the pure pitbull spam. And you'll notice that pit bulls actually don't take out sniper squads very quickly either. Uh, and snipers, although they deal pretty mediocre damage, they're pretty good at holding versus, uh, versus pit bulls, which is kind of good in this game mode. Anything that comes from the barracks is going to be good at holding versus pit bulls. But you'll see that as the spam of the drones come out, it really just comes down to, uh, to pure pit bull spam once more. And I finally wrestle control of the pads when I need it. And then have the options to go into yet more snipers and yet more pit bulls, which is pretty much what you'll see for the rest of this game. Um, didn't mean to put that uh, that turret here, and actually something that you'll notice this game is I actually misplay a lot of my turret positions because I'm an idiot. Basically just pure misclicking, unfortunately, guys. Um, sometimes you do just misclick. Didn't really make a difference though, which is good because again, snipers are just really good in this game mode, and sniper pitbull spam is pretty much all you need to win because snipers again kill everything from the barracks and pitbulls kill everything else. And that was one of the issues with this game mode that I had in, in its entirety. Um, I just felt that the, 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 the making of the deck was fun, but once you figured out the deck that was just good, everything else, if the people didn't have the same deck as you, you basically beat every other deck. Um, and so you, you notice that from the majority, since that first War Dogs that I put onto this, uh, this, this field, I really haven't built anything else other than snipers and pitbulls, um, which has resulted in a very boring game. A very boring game for him, realistically, as well. Um, simply because Defense he just doesn't have what it takes to, uh, to beat what I'm throwing. He's got the Mohawk on the field now. Now, to beat a Mohawk, you have to make sure you're sending two Pitbulls at the same time. Otherwise, your one Pitbull will just lose. So you have to send two Pitbulls at the same time at the Mohawk, and it eventually ends up beating it. Um, he then starts spamming yet more Missile Troopers. But again, I just have the uh, the Snipers. They aren't the quickest at dealing with Defense Missile Troopers. Like, Shockwave Troopers would be better. But they have that extended range, which is really important. I actually uh, have ended up losing a lot of uh, control of the map here, and I think I ended up losing a second missile, which is because of the drone spam. Um, unfortunately, the well-placed turret meant that I couldn't really get my sniper into a good position, and now I've just gone for like four pitbulls, which against this single uh, sniper and this single missile squad isn't very good. But the one ben bonus that you do have in this game mode is you're never Tiberium starved. Um, you actually end up spending more Tiberium than you can, so using, um, generating more Tiberium than you can spend. So if you make a poor decision with the unit, all it's going to do is end up freeing a, a unit slot for you. And as long as it's not like catastrophically timed when it comes to um, uh, the missile charging, you, you generally aren't punished too heavily for making a poor choice because you just generate so much Tiberium in this game mode that you can't actually spend it all. You don't have units that cost a lot. So you can't actually spend Unit the Tiberium that you're, uh, that you're generating. Lost. And you'll notice here that I'm on 160, he's on 160. There isn't really a, a viable way to like spam your Tiberium, um, which is why I'm not so bothered losing a Sniper Squad here or there, because I'm lost. always going to have 50 Tiberium free and ready to go. But I do find it kind of kind of sad Defense that the only online. units that I have built this entire game have literally just been Snipers and Pitbulls. Um, you can see that I actually end up losing a bit of control here. He goes pretty heavily into pitbulls and drones, but I'm just going to win that with pure pitbull spam. Um, I just have to make sure that I time my pitbulls well. I take out the drones, I actually pick up a JJT here. JJT was like the clutch play. The reason the JJT was clutch is because they're quite beefy and they deal with um, with pitbulls really nicely. So it allows me to clean up the uh, the pads where he had spam those pitbulls, and unfortunately he can't get on the uh, missiles in time. My body blocked the drones entering that bottom left pad and then getting the win. 
So I only built Jump Jet Troopers once. I built War Dogs once, but the rest of it was pure sniper and pit bull spam. We'll do uh, one more game. We'll have a look at one more game. I kind of want to find the games that were fairly uh, fairly relevant. This guy, uh, this is an interesting one. It was the same guy, slightly lower levels, but he had a different deck. I'm just going to have a look. I did highlight this one, but I kind of want to show you an MG Squad deck. Because the MG Squad is something that's probably going to come up a lot. But this was a fairly even level battle. He also had snipers, but they were level 8, unfortunately. I'm going to show you this one versus uh, G-Lo. But just because the MG it's Squad is something that you're going to run into a lot. And even though I've got massive level advantage on it, I want to show you how I dealt with the MG Squads. Three, two, I had this map eight one. times, and I think they had the, had the other map twice. So I actually ended up on Fighting Pit like eight times out of ten. Which I actually think favours my deck simply because you the sniper is just really good on Fighting Pit. Um, and pit bulls are really good on fighting pit as well, but everybody's running pit bulls. So he did what I think you shouldn't do. You went harvester first. Never really. I, should, I don't think you should ever go harvester first when you're uh, dealing with an MG squad. Um, I end up sending my war dog at his MG squad. I don't really mind about not charging the missile here because I just want to get as much damage onto his MG squad as possible. And you can see they are basically dead here. Um, I've built a barracks already because I know I want my snipers at some point. Um, and he very cleverly goes into jump jet troopers, just knowing that war dogs are probably going to be sent towards his um, his uh, MG squad again. But now I've got the snipers. MG squads in general, uh, sorry, snipers in general clean up jump jets really nicely. And they also can deal with MG squads if you can distract the MG squad, which is what I'm going to do here. This is just a classic move. Send my war dogs in. Well, they actually end up getting the MG squad. And now you can see why snipers are good versus MG squads that haven't set up. Literal one shots. My my level 11 snipers probably wouldn't do that on equal level MG squads, but it would be two shots at the very maximum. And they won't have set up in that time anyway. But you can see, like, MG, once you get snipers set up and you want to move your MG squads into more offensive positions, they just can't do anything. They, they are so weak when you don't have um, them set up. I mean, you have them moving, but snipers just absolutely decimate you can see that he was trying his best to uh, take out my snipers. He had to pack all the way around because I put my Lieutenant Strong on turret there and I was body blocking the other side. Uh, but unfortunately, the rhinos just aren't strong enough to, uh, to deal with my pit bulls. That's the thing. Like, you can throw rhinos at them, you can throw war dogs at them, but you just have pit bulls. And pit bulls just beat both of those units pretty handily. Um, and honestly, the snipers, I'm very happy to sacrifice here because I'm floating so much Tiberium anyway, it doesn't really matter. So you can see I'm literally just using them as point holders at this point. I really am not that bothered about kiting them because, honestly, I'm generating so much Tiberium that I can literally just refill when it comes to it. I then have the snipers ready to go um, and they can take out the jump jets pretty easily. I am going to kite back against the jump jets just to give myself some space, but the snipers come through once more and jump jets get absolutely obliterated by snipers. And it's just uh, business as usual with Pitbull and uh, sniper spam, basically winning through the game. I put an aggressive turret down. The reason I put this aggressive turret down is for this. If he ever wants to send troops onto that top pad, he's going to have to go past the turret, which makes it much easier for me to kill them. Uh, and honestly, at this point, it's just all about getting control of the pads. And with the turret going, with my pitbull on the bottom side of the map, he actually just really can't contest and ends up losing the second missile pretty handily. Even uh, my war dogs, even his war dogs went down to my snipers. But that's the, the MG squad. And something that he did wrong, I think, is that he went harvester into MG. If you're going to go MG squad, go MG squad without a harvester. Get it set up in aggressive position. Get it backed up by missile troopers at the very least to protect it versus drones. No one really opens airfield on this game mode, so you're usually going to be safe. But you do need to protect it once the, uh, the MG squad is down. So those were a sample of the games that I played. Um, I didn't want to show you all of them because they were just versus like a lot lower levels than me and that just wasn't fun. Uh, but there were a couple of even even-ish level games there that I thought were pretty good. Um, I actually didn't run into anyone from sort of high master Tiberium. Well, they must have been master, but I didn't really run anyone to the, from that I recognized from Tiberium League, which was a bit of a shame. Um, but just shows you that, that realistically the only two ma uh, units that really mattered for me were snipers and, and pit bulls. The, then I had a little bit of war dogs and a little bit of jump jet troopers. But those were the two units that really did the work. So if you want to build a deck, would recommend Blades deck with the snipers with the pit bulls because they were the most relevant units that I had for the entire game mode. Um, okay, so thank you very much guys. I'm uh, happy to be doing some bit of Rivals content again and I will see you soon.